welcome back to another video. My name is Sam. I'm from Siberia 6 Real Estate as well as Remax Real Charm Realty Inc. And I make videos about real estate finance and things I find interesting. In today's video, I actually want to discuss uh, three primary differences uh, between real estate investing and investing in stocks. So in, in the financial markets and into companies. Some of this information I have actually uh, repeated before in my investing videos, whether it be in the video on uh, five things investors should know before they get into real estate investing, the pros and cons of real estate investing. I brought up stocks before, but never as the main topic of a video and uh, opposing it against real estate as a form of investing. So as you can tell from the title, I'm gonna talk about how real estate investing is uh, investing in stocks, uh, although they're the two main primary ways people invest and when people talk about investing, they're either talking about real estate investing or stocks. Uh, so since they're the two main ways people invest, I thought I would make a video on the differences between them because they're, de they're not the same. They're very different in nature. And I just want to preface that this video is not necessarily about which one's better, right? So when I'm explicating the differences between stocks and real estate, uh, I'm not saying, hey, real estate is a better form of investment or stocks is a better form of investing. I'm not making those claims whatsoever. I'm actually just telling you the differences as I see it. So please feel free to subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Uh, you can also check out my other videos, What Your Money Can Buy, and my new series, What Your Money Can Rent. And that's it. Let's get on with the video. So difference number one. Difference number one can be categorized as time. I would say that time is one of the main differences between stocks and real estate. So the reason I've categorized difference number one as time is because real estate typically requires a longer period of time for you to sit on an investment for you to see it appreciate and get a return on that investment whereas with stocks uh, you could sit on the investment for a long period of time but typically most people don't real estate is long form investing so when you re purchase real estate for investing purposes you have to sit on your investment for a long time wait for it to appreciate for instance uh, you can buy 500 shares of a company uh, and sell those 500 shares or 400 or however many uh, at a higher value, right? You've waited for the price per share to go up and now you've sold it from what you bought it initially that very day. That's what people call day trading. And maybe it's not within a day, maybe it's within a week or within a month. And once again, I'm not saying that uh, people don't buy stocks and sit on it for five years. That's what people call longs. There are plenty, plenty of longs, uh, but uh, typically, Day traders, they trade within a day or within a week. Um, most people, uh, on average, I would say, from my understanding, sit on stocks in three month intervals. But with real estate, you can't day trade with real estate. And I've said this in my previous videos. I hope it's a very obvious point. When people talk about flipping houses, uh, what they typically mean is that they buy a property and whether they enhance the property, do renovations, or they just buy the property as is in a hot market and wait for it to appreciate and sell that very property that they did not make any changes to, whatever scenario you're talking about, at minimum, you're talking about four to six months. And that's in a very, very hot market. I mean, this is in a stupendously hot market where you're talking about buying a property and selling it at a, uh, at a noticeable uh, amount of appreciation and profit within four months. I mean, that's very rare. And if a market does allow for that, there's probably something wrong with the market. Most often, and this is even assuming a hot market, uh, you would have to sit on a property for a year. So this fact combined with the related fact that stocks typically could appreciate by 10% within a day, whereas uh, properties don't you know, go up and down in value in spans of days or weeks. It typically takes longer periods of time. These two facts in conjunction with another, I think really point towards one of the main differences between these two main forms of investing being investing in real estate versus investing in stocks. Difference number two. Difference number two can be categorized as value. So you see land as a commodity has a certain amount of intrinsic value, whereas stocks don't. So the value of a stock is tethered to the financial entity, which it is associated with. I mean, stocks have purely a financial value. 
You cannot trade in your stocks for groceries. You, you cannot build with stocks. You cannot use stocks as a tool. Stocks are not actual physical things you own either. They're obviously intangible. And the closest thing you'll get to uh, touching stocks is the sheet of paper which gives you ownership and proof of ownership over however many stocks you own. And most companies don't even pay dividends anymore. So it's not as if you're a legitimate shareholder, which you are, but you're not reaping in the profits and you're not accruing the losses. Thus the value of stocks, once again, are contained within the stock itself. If the market deems that Nike stock is $90 per share, then that's the value. It's the market perception. It's how well the company is doing. But if there's no nothing tangible, nothing intrinsic, you cannot use the stock outside of that context. Now, yes, of course, certain people are paid with stocks. Certain executives, certain CEOs, uh, instead of you know getting an uh, annual salary of a certain amount, they might get half of that, but they get stock options or they get paid with stocks. But once again, that's within a very well-contained context. In the larger context in the everyday world, stocks are kind of useless but land the same thing does not apply to land and were to lose all financial value and we somehow agreed as a society that we would no longer buy land with money and even going further you cannot trade or barter for land meaning uh, if you have a plot of land i cannot just come and buy uh, sell you 50 goats and 500,000 bananas for your lot of land so if we go even that far land will still have value and that's why I say land has intrinsic value. So land is tangible. You can use it as a tool. Uh, so if you can't get any money or any goods for it, you can grow your own goods. You can plant seeds and grow food in your land. Or you might dig one day and say, hey, I've struck oil. So I found a very valuable commodity and resource in my land. Or you can build on your land, which is people, what people typically do. So the fact that you can farm, build, use it as a tool in other contexts or find valuable resources or grow your own valuable resources on your land and it's tangible very much so differentiates it from stocks uh, and differentiates real estate from stocks difference number three can be categorized as abundance so once again i've mentioned this in previous videos but land when you look at land it's finite right so Obviously, we live on planet Earth, and uh, this video is, by the way, made before we have colonized uh, Mars. It might be outdated in a decade, but uh, we live on planet Earth, and we only have a finite amount of land. And as the population grows, and as more people want to own land, and more people need to own land, the, the amount of land available stays the same. Sure, you can account here and there for artificial islands in the future that can be made, you know, with technology, but more or less population rises, land stays the same. As a result, land appreciates consistently over time. This on top of the intrinsic value. Whereas with stocks, yes, obviously stocks are not infinite in the logical sense and the scientific sense of the term infinite. But in the colloquial sense of the term, we can use it as such because uh, stocks are not finite. We can always produce more. So if a company goes public and decides, you know what, we're going to create 10,000 shares and they create 10,000 shares and they give 5,000 shares to the CEOs and executives and middle management and the workers, the remainder 5,000 shares is for the public to, you know, institutions to buy, people to buy. And let's say you purchase 50 shares. So now you own 50 shares out of a total 10,000 shares outstanding. But if the company runs to hard times or it's expanding more and more, decides to further dilute their shares, they can. So you own 50 shares of 10,000 now, but in the future, if the company decides to add a extra 5,000 shares, at that point, you only own 15 shares, or rather 50 shares of 15,000 outstanding shares. And just like that, a company can just dilute their shares further and further and create more shares. And as we said, the same thing does not apply for land. We cannot just create more land as a commodity and as a product and investment. Whereas with stocks, we can't. So that's why I categorize the third difference as abundance. Stocks are abundant, land is not. And those are the three main differences. Uh, obviously, there are a lot more that's different. Uh, but those are the three that come to mind off the top of my head. Uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my other videos. Uh, and yes, if you enjoyed, please subscribe, comment, rate, and review. 
And yeah, many more videos coming up. Uh, thanks for watching.